Back. Glory to God. What a day to be alive. Here we are, Jesus Experience, Tuesday night, and we want to thank God for your life as we're talking about God's power of your prophetic purpose. Your prophetic purpose. Yes. Pastor Faye and I are together tonight with you, and we're just excited to be as a family, to share our hearts, open up the revelation knowledge of the person of Jesus Christ, the applicable way in which you can take truth, apply it in your life, and experience freedom. So as we take this journey, let's get every care, worry, burden, frustration, anxiety, cast every thought over unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we give you praise. Master Faye, why don't you just lead I'll us in you. this you know, time. all of us have to do that every God day because, because we get caught up in the busyness of work. Yes. And let's just loose ourselves. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, My God. for this set-apart time that's set apart for your purpose Kale for this time, for this, for this webinar. God, God, that we might speak your words, that we might decree the counsel yes. of God. Lord, that each one of us would hear your wisdom, your word of knowledge, your word of wisdom. Lord, that we would function according to the purpose that's set apart for this hour in this webinar, and we loose ourselves right now. You do that too. We loose ourselves yes, right now from the Father, cares of the day Jesus in Jesus' name. name, and we thank you, Lord. This time is set apart for us to hear from you and for you to hear from God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it's interesting. It says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy, destroy the, the works of, of the devil. devil. And Jesus lived with an overriding purpose of him being in the flesh. He was. That it, was why he was brought to this earth, that he destroyed the works of the devil. And if he didn't have that purpose, his mother would have driven him off. You're, you're hungry, son. You're not taking care of yourself. And he says, who is my mother, my brother, my sister, but those who do the will of my father. So he the stayed. disciples pulled him. Oh, people, they people, were, people grabbed hold of him. They thronged on him. him. They thronged him. But he knew he had the vision set before him. He had the purpose. So as we take this journey tonight, there is a presiding overall ruling purpose of the why that you are on this earth. Can you Not, imagine? Just think about that for a minute. God has a designed purpose for your life. Only you can fulfill it. Nobody else can fulfill the purpose of God that he placed you here for. Now, sometimes people get affected by life circumstance and situation, and that's what the eight life-changing aspects of Jesus are for, to, so that the things that occur in our everyday life are muted and silenced. But what God has designed us to function in is the overriding ruling purpose to which He's called us. We're called according to his purpose. Now, that has been in your life and mine a very interesting journey. Right. Because it's not about a task. Right. It's not about do I... Functions or jobs or yeah, do I things that happen. Yeah, do I make $15 an hour? Do I make $300 an hour? Do right. I... I wouldn't buy. mind if you made $300 an hour. You, you wouldn't yeah, mind wouldn't that? Mind that would be all. okay. But yeah. you know what? You have to... At some point in your life, you have to begin to ask God, what is the purpose? What are you here for? And then what you end up finding out is everything that's gone on in your life led up to the point of you discovering that purpose. And you find out that this part matches with this part and that part comes together. Yeah. And you get to know that designed purpose of God. And when you find that, then your functionality and you do those everyday tasks with a different understanding. And uh, you know, you know, your identity and the purpose is not in the things that you do, but it's in the plan that God has for you because things change all the time. You talked about identity. It's, it's why am I who I am to God? Right. You know, I can say I'm a child of God, but being a child of God does not have reference without knowing why God has me as his child. Right. What, why am I a child of God? Why is Jesus Lord? What does it mean to say Jesus Christ is Lord? I mean, you, you can say Jesus is president. Well, that's an elected office. He's not elected. Right. You could say Jesus is a, a king over a dominion area, but he is called the king of kings and Lord of lords. Absolutely. So there is a higher purpose 
being a child of God than just generically saying, I'm a child of God. If I know why Jesus is living through me, and I know why I am to God in my identity a child of God, then my entire focus of life comes into clarity. Right. You know, Gary, I, I don't think that, I think one of the things for people to understand is you don't have to get the whole picture all at one time, that God gives you a glimpse and he gives you a part of it. And then it's, again, it starts to come together from knowing who you are. It's like for one of the things I'm going to talk about you and I just for a little bit. Um, one, of the, one of the purposes that God has placed you on this earth, I believe that you are the writer of a vision. That God has always, from the very young age, prepared you to be somebody who writes the vision. Right. And you've always, you know, even from when you had your lawn cutting business when you were a child, you were always the point person of writing the vision. Um, in my life, I've always been the runner with the vision. And why don't you explain a little bit about the difference of the two, the writer and the runner? I mean, there's yeah. other purposes we're going to talk about, but that's just one. But unique to our calling. I, I want to read this scripture to you. It says in then verse... Then you'll get back to that, right? Right. Uh, we're going we're okay. to deal with that very specific thing okay. in this scripture. It says in verse 9 of Ephesians 1, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Now, God makes known the mystery of his will to us according to the good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. So here's the will of God done in heaven. And there is in God an overriding purpose that he's making known to us because right. it's his will. Let me read on. That, and this is the purpose, so he's made the knowledge of his will known to you. It's according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom also, verse 11, we also have obtained an inheritance being what scripture are you in, Gary? Ephesians 1, verse 9 through 11. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Now, let, let's, let's look at this for a minute because you're, at, you're talking about me right. being a writer of a vision. Right. Before creation, God already set the counsel of his will in operation for our life. Exactly. We are designed by God with the same purpose of Jesus because there's not two Jesus. You don't have one Jesus in heaven and a, a different one living in you. The purpose of him is to destroy the works of the enemy and to establish the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So we have Pray your kingdom come on earth. Pray your will be done on earth. Now, these are preset, God ordained directives that are the why I am a child of God. I'm not a child of God because God's lonely. I'm not a child of God because God needed kids. And he, he felt like he was fatherless and didn't have any kids. I mean, I've heard, I've heard some crazy teaching out there. I am a child of God. You're a child of God because you are elected by God, pre-selected by determinate counsel of God to fulfill what he has called you to walk in, a predetermined destiny, a purposeful life now and it's so cool because he picks the exact time in time for you to be born yeah yeah that you didn't so decide you didn't Thank decide god i wasn't born in the 1500s i don't oh. think i quite would have fit well not with the not with the way you're not wired not with the way i'm wired no, god, god wired me for 
this day and this age. And, and you just, just think about the mystery of, of God in knowing that you would be the perfect fit in a time of humanity in the purpose of God to destroy the works of the enemy and you're wired for it. You know what? And that's so cool because the, the time period that we live in, women have so many more freedoms than what they've had in even 50, 60, 80, 100 years ago. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, what better day and age to be a woman? I remember there was a lady that wanted you to be... That was only in the 1970s. That right. wasn't that long ago. But, but Faye's design in her purposeful life is to run with a vision, not to fit into a mold of someone else's... Nope standards or belief system no. you get you know not just you but you know mostly you because you and i are married and have been married for a very long time but when somebody has a vision um i capture that in my heart and something happens on the inside of me and then i just all of a sudden all these parts of me come together and i run with it and i make that vision happen because that's how i'm wired you know, we've done that as husband and wife when we had our businesses and things right. like that. We worked together. And in ministry, we worked together. And in every aspect of our life, you know, Gary's usually the writer and I'm usually the runner. But that's in me in nature. You know, somebody will come to me with a vision for a new ministry. And all of a sudden, you know, this bears witness in my spirit. And my mind just starts going my spirit we can make this happen that can the happen this happens. can pull together yeah, like, it's like okay this part and that part can come together and that's how i'm wired you're wired in a specific way for what god has purposed you for i want you to think about that how are you wired by god by god and you're oh. wired for this day and age exciting you just read this to me just a minute ago when we're talking about writers readers runners of the vision well, we're just talking about yeah, two of the ways you and i you and, and i two of the ways we're wired you were just reading to me out of this study guide that we have mm -hmm. here about moses why don't oh, yeah. you why don't you just take that oh, for yeah. a moment you were That's just okay we, we've got this um uh series that we're offering this week it's called the power of god's prophetic purpose and we're offering it six cds with a study guide uh, for $30. Uh, it's also a uh, web offer 134. You can go on uh, shopjesusexperience.com. I guess they can download it or whatever too. And it's available, but uh, it's something really good. So you want me to read out of um, about Moses? You, yeah, because here's Moses. And this is my life. As a child, I grew up with this propensity to want, I see disorganization and people not knowing what to do. And so I get this thing, well, we can move everybody in this direction and accomplish this objective. Right. So in uh, Exodus 3, verse 11, do you have that in your, your Bible? Oh, Gary? Exodus okay. 3, 11. Let me Exodus just, I'm, 3, I'm 11. Still in, okay. Okay. It says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Do you think that God already knew who uh, Moses was and the purpose that Moses was destined to be a deliverer of the people but Moses didn't see it he didn't see the purpose of which he was alive in that time that he was called to be a deliverer he was a foreshadow of Jesus he was a deliverer of the people and and Moses was going to be the person he was a stammerer he was a stutterer he didn't think he had anything within himself yeah. But God saw the purpose that he destined and, and called him to be. You know, the very next sentence is, is very critical. He says, and he said, certainly, I will be with you. Wow. The, the key of understanding your called purpose is that you do not make the purpose manifest. He watches over his word to perform it. He said, I have purposed it. Who's going to disannul it? I have called it into being. Who will stop it? Just when he spoke who Moses was, and Moses said, who am I? It wasn't, well, this is who you are, so go do who you are. No. He said, he said this I'll, is I'll who you, you are. I'll be with you. He said, he said God, I called you. God said, if I called you, I'm going to be there with you to see it come to pass. 
Now, that all by itself. That's a whole revelation if you get that. that is, God is there with you. I mean, then, I mean, just think. It, God knew that this stick in Moses' hand would yep. eat the snakes of all of the, the sorcerers. Shadow, would throw it down and the waters would open up. Yeah, and that the waters would turn to blood, they'd turn frogs and they'd have hemorrhoids and all these issues would happen, the plagues of, of Egypt that would take place. And God knew beforehand that he would be with Moses. Now, is you could say, well, God's with you, Pastor Gary. I, oh, I, yeah, but he's with all of us. That's the critical understanding of purpose is that we are divinely called uniquely purposed, wired to fulfill everything God designed us for. You know, I want you just to take a minute and think about how you're wired, how God's purposed you. Maybe you don't have the full definition of what you are purposed for, but you can understand how you are put together. You have things that are innate within you and you know they're, they're put right on the inside of you that you didn't have to have education give it to you. You didn't have to have somebody teach you to be it. You know how you are. You know, there are people that are mm -hmm. uniquely gifted to do things. We were just talking about this uh, just a couple of weeks ago that, you know, you're, you're so uniquely designed that like you said, I I'll never be able to work for a suit. You know, why don't you, you know, you just. Yeah, well, you know, one of the challenges that a lot of people have in life is that they fit into a structure or they don't fit into a structure. And I'm the type of an individual that my design, my purpose, creates a structure. Exactly. You see a vision and you put the vision out there and, and then the structure follows and the it. structure follows the vision. So what a vision I vision writer, a vision caster, right. you know, what however whatever word you want to use, that's how you're it's, it's, it's part of you. It, yeah, it's the you way can't, I am. You can't, it's funny thing is, this is kind of a little secret here. You can't put Gary behind a desk. He doesn't fit. I don't fit. He doesn't fit. You can't sit him down with, he's got a full understanding of accounting, but he's not going to be happy sitting day in and day out with a calculator, typing numbers. You know, it goes off in his head. Right. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't work on an Excel and put all the calculations in and, and be satisfied at the end of the day that they balanced. But you would. I expected the balance, so I'd hire an accountant. Right. That's just how you are. Right. And, and but, you know, maybe you are that detail person. You know, maybe you're somebody that God puts you there for the details. I'm not a detail person. I'm a person who sees over something. I almost like see I can look down and say, um, and say, okay, this is how this should work. That should be that, how that works. This works, that works. This is it. But don't make me sit down and have to do the details of seeing it function. I'll run with it. I'll put it out there, but I'll also see that things get done. It's like um, one of the things that, that uh, I just can't do is detail work. The thought of taking, I mean, I know how to sew, okay? I mean, I, I took, back in my day in school, we <laughs> had home economics home ec, right? class. And, yeah. You know, we had, you know, we learned how to sew. I used to sew my kids' clothes when they were little, and then I know how to use a sewing machine, and I know how to thread a machine, and I know how to sew, you know. But my goodness, the thought of me having to take a needle and thread and then sew something by hand, nope, I'll take it and have somebody else sew it. And they love it. You get some people who are so detailed, they want to make sure every stitch is just perfect. That is a purpose in your life. That's a gifting. That's a God-given gifting that you are a detailed person. That is a blessing. Now, those, those characteristics that you discover about yourself, like, like Moses, mm -hmm. he, he discovered about himself that he was not eloquent, but yet he was called. Yep. And he also discovered that he had within him a radical, intense boldness to where God could speak to him, go to Pharaoh and command him to let my people go. Other people 
would have just melted. They would have wet their pants. Yeah, just melted with the thought. Oh, my gosh. I said they wet their pants. He said right. they melted. Oh, well. Yeah, same thing. So, but yet you might say, well, one is a spirit of fear, but <laughs> it, it's really the design because not everyone is designed to go in the front of Pharaoh's face and speak, let my people go. Just like there were people on the day of Passover that when he commanded there needed to be a lamb for every house, there were people that went out and got the Paschal lamb <coughs> so that every house had its own lamb, counted to make sure that the entire lamb would be eaten by the house, and if the house wasn't enough people, they would bring two families together. They were purposed to do that. They were, that was in their dynamic of functionality in their purpose. So the reason we're sharing this is that you are unique and the overriding uniqueness of God's purpose in your life is clear. A, you're already <coughs> wired to fulfill that purpose. Everything about your makeup is set for that purpose. You can look back in life, you can look forward in vision, and there is a carved out, course of action that God has designed where you are motivated, you just cannot accept things going the way they are. You have this inside of you, there, there must be, this must be fixed, this must be correct, this must be on this course. And that gives you an indication of the areas that your purpose will subdue obstruction and conflict. Okay. Now, can I define something here? Um, sure. Webster's defines uh, purpose as the, the design, the intention, the desired end, or the object for which something exists or done. No. So I, let's say it again. Okay. Purpose is the design. The design. The intention, the desired end, or the object for which something exists or it is done. Okay, so if, if it I... It answers the why. It answers the why. So if I build a car and I decide I'm going to use it as a boat... It's not designed for that. It doesn't matter what I would like to use it for... Or how much you want it to float. And I drive it into the ocean... It's going to sink. Because it's not designed. Or if I drive it through the woods and there's not a road... It's going to run into trees. It's going to get hung up in thickets. Exactly. Because it's not designed for it. You know, here in the study guide, you also say, um, uh, you said, in my view, the purpose of something answers the question why. So as you begin to see the purpose of something, you'll also understand its attributes, its giftings, and its characteristics. And it's a, the following is like a normal progression. Why should it exist? What should it do? What designs and features does it need to have, and how will it work? And that's, that's, the, that's why the why it's built. That's the purpose. So we have an example that we use, and Faith asked the question about, I'm a writer. Part of the design of my purpose is to see and bring it into being. I have a little statement. If I can see it, I'm be it. I mean, see it and be it. I mean, if I can identify the, the clear identity of it and I can perceive it in God's called purpose, then I am it. So that's just the dynamic nature that I am in my purpose in God. Now, and there's different things that are designed with specific purposes. And we have this little, uh, Gary, Gary's used this little uh, kind of like a little joke or a little saying or whatever, using a, a, a table knife, okay, or, right. a, or a steak knife. And a steak knife or a table knife is designed to be a knife. It is not designed to be a screwdriver. But how many of us have taken knives right. and used them as a screwdriver? Oh, have yeah. Have you ever done and, it? And we have you know? drawers. We, well, we don't because we, we, we stopped doing that a long time ago. Right. Every once in a while, I'll find a twisted tip of a knife. And I'll know you twisted couldn't. Twisted tip. Twisted tip. If you have a lot of twisted tips in your drawers... It, and it means that you've been using the knives outside of their purpose. Get a screwdriver. So we call it knife abuse. 
Yeah. And you might say, what is that? Until the purpose of a thing is known, only abuse results. Until a purpose of a thing is known, only abuse happens. So if you don't know the purpose of your life, you're abusing your life. Yeah, and someone else will abuse it. Somebody else will take advantage of you. That's why you heard Pastor Faith say, you know, I won't just work for a suit because I know the methodical bottom line of an executive plan to create and utilize manpower, machinery, and technology to create profit for the benefit of stockholders whatever. or whatever. And that... Ministry, in all of your life, that's always been in you. You know, when it was in business, it was there in business. It was to create the purpose. You had the vision. You cast the vision. You saw the vision of why we had our businesses, where to make money. We also were a major blessing to a lot of ministries. I can remember. Right. Do you remember the time when we were in a church and we knew we were going to leave and we were, we were waiting for some place for God to show us where to give the tithe? And the tithe was huge. I mean, back then, right. that was a huge right. tithe because yep. you were working and you were right. making a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And I remember we walked into this one church and we looked at each other and we said, this church is doing the work of God and we're going to give our tithe. I think we flipped that pastor out. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. I remember that day happened yeah. because, you know, the, the, the purpose, you've got to know the purpose. And. Um, I don't know how I got off on that, but we were talking about but it the, just, the purpose all through your life has always been to um, advance, advance the kingdom, the kingdom right. in some way. Advance the, oh, I know what it was, because we always had it in our heart to finance ministry. Even though we are in ministry, we still finance ministry. We, we've right. learned how to create wealth personally, not having to do with ministry, but in our personal life to further fund the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are that's part of what it is in, in, in your gifting. You know, that's a gifting. It's a purpose in you. So if somebody tried to use me. Oh, that could happen. For their end of personal gain without regard to what my purpose is, I couldn't subject myself to it. It, it wouldn't fit. Right. I mean, I, I just... That's why I said to, to Faye, I said, I can't just work for a suit. I yeah, mean, you couldn't just be a, an executive in a company. Right. And, and just, just further. Furthering their bottom further line. Furthering Exxon increasing. or furthering right. Google or further, further any kind of companies that are out there. That's not what you can do because you know the purpose is for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now that, you, you, if you can settle just, I mean, some very fundamental. That's, that's in your life. Yeah, fundamental things that are unalterable absolutes. My purpose is to destroy the work of the enemy, to bring freedom to the bound, opening prison doors, bring healing to those that are sick, bring salvation to those that are lost, the power to God, of God to those that are weak, to bring fellowship to those that are disenfranchised, and see that life of Christ penetrate and liberate. I, you know, in the education initiative, I've had meetings with educators and a lot of educators do not have a value of Christ embedded faith based advancing, uh, using people and seeing people as an evangel. So they just want to see people make more money. And so their end is education is single for the benefit of creating a better life for them. So that is why they do what they do. Right. And they asked me the question. Which isn't anything wrong if that's where they feel that they're called to do. Right. And right. they asked me the question, if we could take the Christ component out, would you still do this? I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because my purpose is not to give people a better job. It is to have Christ manifest in them and as he's manifesting, we'll do everything we can do to see them get a better job. Right. You know, take, for example, somebody who has a purpose in them to teach. Okay. There right. are people that are, you know, you're using education here, but let's back it up a little bit and talk about church life. Um, you know, if you're a, you obviously, Gary, are a very gifted teacher. You know, that's one of the things that you are purpose for. You are purpose to bring forth teaching to the body of Christ. 
twisted tips, just like a knife. It's an illustration, right? right but, you yeah. know, you're, you're, you're gifted in, and one of the purposes of your life is to open the Word of God up and right. have it be rightly divided and have it be expounded on and, and taught. But I can remember way before we were ever in ministry that teaching was in you, that, that prophetic purpose of being able to teach was part of who you were. I can remember when we first were, were just young Christians in, right. a, in a small church. And what you did, you were teaching the, the young 12-year-old uh, Sunday school class of boys. Right. You know, because that was who he was. He would take the word and open it up so that a 12-year-old could understand it. You know, maybe you have a gift of teaching. You know, mm. I don't have that gift of teaching. I don't have that purpose of my life. I'm more of an exhorter. You know, I have a, I, you know, I'm more of an encourager. And, and so there's different things. How are you purposed by God? What's hmm. in you? So in this dynamic, you, you think about a knife. It has thickness on the back and it comes down very sharp on the edge. And it's not designed to be a hammer. Yeah, it's not a torque. It's, you, don't it, a torque. you don't use it as a, as a pry bar to open up a can. You don't jam it in the top of a of a cannon and use it to open the can. You oh just my gosh! Did that? You, you, no, no. no. Oh. Um, I my my daughter and her husband, and my grandchildren live in Nigeria, and uh, I'm sorry if you're if you're in Nigeria watching this, please don't take a personal offense, but I can't tell you how many broken, twisted knives are over there because the girls that help out in the house and that help out in the kitchen and help prepare some of the meals, they use a knife to open a can. So you get a thing of uh, evaporated milk and they will take that knife and bam, that right. knife and pry the can opener. And I'm like, don't you have a can opener? And they'll go, what's a can opener? We have a knife. No, right. the can opener is what will open it's the can. Purposed. It's designed right. to open the can. But Lori's house has so many busted knives with twisted tips. <laughs> Sorry if you're watching from Nigeria or in another country and you do the same thing. Find the purpose of the thing and use it for that. So herein is the question that Faye shared earlier. Since a child, I always had this writing the vision motivation and purpose in me. Before I was born again, it was there. It was always there. I, I, I've always had that. Well, it didn't matter where I was or what I did. It was always there. There had to be clarity and direction given. And I ended up being the one giving clarity and direction. You did. You were, we, we've known each other since we were in junior high school. I guess they now right. call it middle school. Right. You know, that was back when Gary was the president of the student council, captain of the football team. In other words, he was always the person in charge. He right. was always giving direction to the football team, giving direction to the student council. You know, and then uh, he had his lawn cutting business when he was nine. And, you know, he were, were you nine or were you 11? No, I was nine. Nine. Yeah. And he had all these other guys, all these other young people. And I people. ran into one of, the, one of the families that lived across the street that remembered a lawnmower caught on That's fire. That's right, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, that just happened recently. Yeah. But um, so he's always been somebody that pointed in that direction. But you've got unique things just like Gary does, now, just like I do. Now, what if they don't have that take charge directive? What if they have, like you talked about, they have the, you know, I mean, the sons of Issachar, for example, they had understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do. Mm -hmm. But David was just a warrior, not just a warrior, but he would just jump up and go to war. He, right. But he may not be in the right war. He may not right. be going the right direction, but he, he required the sons of Issachar that would understand the times they were in, the, the battle plans that were to be executed and the, the directives that were there. Right. You know, I think that's one of the, the, the most wonderful things is that when you're in a local church, and I really pray you're in a local church, hopefully you're in this local church if you're nearby, but maybe you're, you know, whatever church you're in, there are so many areas that you can find oh, yeah. places for your purpose to get utilized. When Gary talked about David being a man of war, we have a young man that, and, he, and he's, you know, he's, he's young. He's still in his 20s, you know, and um, he's taken, um, in just a matter of two months, taken our security department 
And because of his background, which I'm not going to go into, but because of his background in law enforcement and security, he has totally changed our security system here in the ministry. And he's doing training, he's doing teaching, he's going through our systems, he's going through and he's looking at everything from a security standpoint. I don't think that way. I park my car when I see a parking spot. I pull right into the parking spot. And he taught me, and he said, because he thinks security-wise, right. he said, Pastor Fay, he said, never pull into a parking spot. Always back out of a, back into a parking spot. And then tell me, explain to me why he told me to do that. Well, for example, if... But this is what this guy did. Yeah. He thinks security. So if you have Just a like person... Just like David was a man of war. Right. So if you David have a person coming at you, you can use your door as a weapon against him. You can, if somebody's shooting, you get down behind your instrument panel and your entire engine is your blockade to stop the bullets from getting through to you. I mean, or if you're backing out of a parking spot and somebody's got you blocked with a car, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do, but if you're, you pull out, man, you can ram that car. Yeah, you have far better control with the front wheels turning than you have with the back wheels that are straight, that don't turn. So there's, there's so many but different things. David was a man of war. Right. This young man we're talking about has that same kind of gifting as David did. You know, he thinks David thought war. This guy thinks security. So right. he's found yeah, a different, purpose. Different defense you know, mechanisms yeah. and ways of offensive actions. Right. And he's thought, he's, he's using his giftings for the body of Christ. And so what is your purpose? What, when I, when I, and one thing I want you to be very clear with, and that is, now listen to this sentence again in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. Remember, Moses, all Moses had to deliver the children of Israel was words. Hmm. Moses did not have an army. Moses did not have provision. Moses did not have eloquence. Moses did not have influence. Moses was a rejected son of the Pharaoh that left, adopted son, that left the house that was no longer accepted, no longer wanted, and now he comes back and all he has is words. But the words are God's. Mm. And the words that are God's, God is backing up. God so, will back you up. When you think about, now, now consider the reality. You came out your mother's womb to manifest the Son of God. His purpose is to destroy the work of the enemy. You're faced with all types of obstacles and conflicts, frustrations and disappointments. You are inherently, internally designed to conquer them. Your purpose is to make his enemies his footstool. Now, you might say, but I am just overwhelmed. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. You get in relationship with someone, like, for example, myself, and, and I say, this is the way we're going. All of a sudden, bam, 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 things line up, and you start functioning. You say, well, what if I don't have that person in my relationship? You have God in your relationship. He is that person. Now, the body of Christ works far better when every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. And God says he places the members in the body as it, as it pleases him. Exactly. Not as it pleases the pastor, but as it pleases him. So our design... So can I, I can't tell people where they fit in the body. No. I get people that come up to me all the time. Pastor Faye, what should I do? And I'll say, well, what do you want to do? Right. What do you have in your heart? What do you have what, in your right. heart? What's God speaking to you? Now, this, this, is the, this is so amazing because here's somebody coming into victory, coming into a church you're in, and you think, well, how and where do I fit? What is my calling? What is my gifting? Where am I? So many times people sit back in frustration waiting for somebody else to give them directive. Listen to this sentence. It says in Ephesians 1 verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. Now, 
Let me give you a picture of what that means. You are born again a child of God. Everything necessary to bring that will of God done in your life has already been set in the predetermined will and counsel of God. The plan, the destiny, the motivational impetus that moves you to action is already in line. You are wired for it. Now there must be inheritance, mm -hmm. deposits, if you will. It's like going to a bank and making a withdrawal. And that withdrawal is specific to the demand that you have. You may have a million dollars in the bank, but you Not me, but I'll, I'll take it. You only need enough gas for your car right. to get from point A to point B. So you don't need a million dollars to drive your car to A to B. You need $40 of gas. So you just put a demand on $40. That's part of your rightful inheritance is yours. So you put a demand on that. You don't need a million dollars. You need $40. But now you find but yourself. Some people sit there and wait because they're waiting for the million dollars or they're waiting for the big plan of God yeah, exactly. rather than stepping out in the small of what there is the need for right now. And so they, they, they don't know that there is an inheritance predestined according to the purpose of him who works everything after the counsel of his will. So I'm already wired to direct things, but I need to direct three children in my community to cut grass. I need to direct lawn clippers to be in the hands of somebody who will clip grass. I need to direct gas into a gas can, into a, a lawnmower. But because you also had a mouth that liked to speak, you were the one who went out and got the contracts. I walked around, I knocked nine, on the door. Nine years old. My father typed my contracts. He said, I don't know what you want to do, but he could type. He said, if you'll tell me, I'll type up the agreements and then I'll put, back then it was carbon paper, yeah, I'll put that? layers of carbon paper in and then we'll take scissors and we'll cut them into strips. You sign your agreement. So your father was running with your vision. He was Way running. Back then. <laughs> he was, because I would tell him, I'm going to, this person's lawn is a $5 lawn. That person's lawn is a $4 lawn. That person's lawn is a $9 lawn. He goes, what's the difference? I said, they have more edging to do. They have more shrubs to cut. They have more trees to cut around. a long time ago, guys. You can't get your grass cut no, for that No, can't now. do it. But I, I remember my father saying, well, how are you going to bid the job? I said, I bid it by the amount of work that it requires to get the job done and how long I've got to have somebody do the work. So he said, just tell me what you want. I said, okay. I, I said, now put a blank. That's that person's name. Agree to hire Gary Whetstone and anyone he decides to work, to do blank. And we had a blank, 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 blank. And so he'd write in, edge the lawn, cut the grass, sweep the lawn, sweep the, the driveway off. And every little thing I'd put down, that was 50 cents, that was a dollar. And so by the time I agree to pay, and then we'd put down every week for the entire summer because I wasn't gonna do it just one time. I wanted a contract for the summer. Right, and you were not gonna go out and cut everybody's grass. I didn't cut hardly anybody's grass, except for the ones that paid real well. So what I did is I got the contract, then I went to the neighbors that had working lawnmowers. And I said, how would you like to make so much money to cut that person's grass? They said, I'd love to. I said, go make sure your father will pay for the gas, because I'm not paying for the gas. So he, and sure enough, they cut the grass. I'd go and inspect it. I'd get the pay. I'd take my portion, give it to them. They'd take it home. Their father would take the gas money out of it. And we employed the community. But the reason I'm saying that is it was in the purpose, and it was part of my inheritance. The gas was part of the inheritance. The lawnmowers, the kids in the neighborhood. It was all the predetermined inheritance already in place. It's all in place. Yeah, those giftings and those uh, initiatives that God's placed in you, those um, abilities, the inherent things, are all part of the purpose of what God's planned for you, for your life. And it just is plugging them in 
to where they're going to get the maximum benefit. I don't know about you, I want to get the maximum benefit out of it. And so, you know, I, you know, that's what you do. You know, I mean, I run with the vision. So I, I run with what Gary's got, and I run to see to make it happen. I can't do, believe me, I cannot do everything this man has vision for. It I can't, can't do what God has given me vision <laughs> you for. Can't. He's got to do it. There has to be a multitude of people right. that are there to accomplish the vision. You may be one of those people. You know, we, we run up against people that are called, that say they're called to make money for the kingdom of God. You know, that they, they believe that is their purpose. And right. they, they believe for raises on their job. They believe that usually they're in some type of sales where they get extra commissions. And all of a sudden they find out they get these giant commissions. Yeah. And they're able to fund the kingdom of God better and more. But they, they find such fulfillment in just being able to make money for the, the further the gospel of Jesus Christ in whatever way. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, believe me, that is a purpose. You know, God had people when the temple was built, you know, right. how, how people came and brought the silver, they brought the gold, they brought all the fine garments. They, you know, people brought the, the things that they had, what was in them. You know, the, the weavers brought their fabrics. The, the, the cedars of Lebanon, there was somebody out there cutting down the wood. There were people that were purposed to be the ones to supply the wood. You know, the, 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 um, the uh, badger uh, covers, the, the, you know, the, the, oh, yeah, the, the skinning. Oh, yeah, the tabernacle wilderness. Yeah, the, right. yeah, the tabernacle in the wilderness. There were people that were gifted in skinning animals. Not everybody right. is gifted in that. You know, so there were distinct purposes for the time. So I know there are things that you are purposed for, that God can only reveal them to you. He cannot reveal to me your purpose. He cannot reveal to Pastor Gary. You get people to come up to you all the time. Yeah, that people want me to prophesy over them. And that's tell, a really big mistake. Tell that me happens. what God's saying to me. And And there are people that, that do that. Yeah, some people will really, do that. It's really and it's, that, it's that scary. is that's a concern to me because God's given us the ears to hear. He said, You're my sheep, you hear my voice, the voice of another you will not follow. And so there is the place of confirmation, affirmation, comfort, exhortation that comes with prophetic utterance, but it does not tell you what God's saying to you as if now you're accountable to the voice of another that God's saying. You're accountable to the voice of God that's speaking in you, and if their voice is attesting to, is confirming, is comforting, is exhorting you for action, then it is not their voice, it's God's voice that you're standing in accountability and relationship with. So be very careful when you're talking yeah. about having somebody give you the will of God for your life. You know, I, I hear this, in fact, I was on a television show and the moderator said, Pastor Gary might even come and give you a prophecy showing you the will of God for your life. Won't happen. And I thought, this is the will of God for your life. You're sanctified, set apart to God, because the Bible says this is God's will, <laughs> your sanctification. And so the moderator said, I thought you were going to give them specifics. I said, I just did. Specifically, you're set apart to God to hear his voice uniquely you've got ears to hear what God says to you and empowered by that voice you'll do everything God says it's called the obedience of the faith you will fulfill what expectation is from God and that which has come from God in you you will have the motivation because it's God who works within you to will to do of his good pleasure so the person says well, you just got the prophecy from the Word of God, how to fulfill the will of God. He said, I told you. He would say what the will of God is. <laughs> I don't think that was what they were expecting. But. No, but that's what they got because that's the will of God. And in that, your inheritance is predetermined. I, I just want to share something tonight before we, we come to a close. And this series called... The power really good of God's prophetic purpose. It, 
it's a guidance series. It, it takes you into comprehending who you are, the quest of your identity, showing, God showing you his purpose. What's wrong with this picture when your prophetic design is not operative in an environment? You feel like a fish out of water. You feel like something is so out of sync. Either you're going to subdue everything that's contrary to God in it, or you're going to get placed in another environment to fulfill that called purpose. So don't ever think it's always one way. It very well may be you get placed in another environment to fulfill that purpose. Then stand in your prophetic purpose and fight. Paul told Timothy to fight with the prophecies that went before upon him, that the utterances of God became a battle axe in his life to war against every word of the enemy assigned against him. Then the last, second to the last is called the perfect fit. It's where, and that's a unique dimension of this prophetic call of God, is when you do fit and you find the people you fit with yeah. and you find the, the called dimension of relationship that you fit with and you find the inheritance that comes from God that is useful for that fit. You, you have now the purpose for money. Money is just not there for what you want. It's there for what God has purposed it for. And finally, it is called empowered by the call. You are supernaturally empowered by that call. Now, as we're talking about, and this is what I want to share, this series is available, six CDs, comes with a study guide, $30 love gift to Jesus Experience. We made a mistake on the web offer. The web offer is 130. A 130. The 130. Okay. I gave the wrong uh, web offer. Okay. Earlier. And it's shop.jesusexperience.com. Shop.jesusexperience.com. Now. And it's called The Power of God's Prophetic Purpose. Think about this text. And we are, you are, we all are in this course of God's called destiny. God preordained inheritance to be dispersed as we step into our prophetic calling. So let's take called for a church. We're called to pastor. We have four people, eight people, 10 people. God's not giving us a 18 acre complex with seating of 1500 seats when we have 200 people. When we are at 500 people, now here comes provision. Here comes inheritance. Now property comes. All of a sudden, we have vision for opening up Bible schools. We create the curriculum. We don't have the means of doing everything. And God adds people that, that, that can do it. Uh, producers because there are, and yeah, because writers. there are people and, that, are, that are gifted. You know, um, you've got some great books that are written but you had somebody help you write the books. Absolutely. You know, um, because there are people who are gifted in that. And, and I just really, I really pray that you can find what you are gifted in, what you are purpose for, and then plug that in to your local church. Plug that in to where you can see those gifts being operated. Plug, you know, plug it in to, if you can, in your employment. What is so sad, Gary, is that so many times people are not using their prophetic purpose in their employment. Yeah. They get they they end up getting a job that has nothing to do with what they're gifted in. And they find sometimes their greatest uh, joy and fulfillment is in the local church because that's where they're gifting their prophetic giftings of prophetic purpose can be fulfilled because it's not being fulfilled on the job. Not everybody can, mm. you know, that's that's a hard thing. But, um, because you have to have a paycheck. But God orchestrates everything after the counsel of his will. I have not found in my life any area that I've been employed in that is not serviceable in the purpose of God in my life. 
in welding. I mean, today we were in the warehouse and all of this equipment was out there and one of the pieces of equipment was for a shop. And so the person says, do you want to just throw this away? And I said, no, because if we ever did a shop operation, a bandsaw, special sanders, a vise, these pieces of equipment would be necessary right now because we're not doing that, it would have no purpose today. But it does have a purpose if we set up a small shop, started training young people how to cut wood, how to make things. I mean, it's all oh, here. We just had, I just had that happen last week. We're cleaning out the warehouse and going through some things, and I saw somebody over there throwing out reams of paper that were colored paper, and I went, stop, stop. They said, I said, what are you doing? And they said, we're throwing it out. They, don't, they can't print on this paper anymore because it doesn't fit through the copier. And I'm like, wait, colored paper? Children? Purpose for that colored paper is for children to be able to use for arts and crafts. Right. And I said, stop, don't throw anything else out unless I see it because there's a purpose for a thing. We may not be using it to go through a copier machine or a printing right. press anymore, but it has a purpose. Nothing is wasted in your life. Nothing you are called to do is wasted. Every gifting, every purpose that God placed from the foundations of the world for you is purposed by God. And you're just waiting for that placement. Mm -hmm. Seek the placement. Seek the kingdom of God first. And he'll add it to everything else to you. He'll show you where your giftings are. He'll give you that place to be able to function. If you're in victory and you're in this local church and you know what you're gifted in, come and tell me. I'll find the place for you because that's what I'm gifted in. Mm. You know, we want you to be fulfilled in the purpose, the predestined purpose of God on your life. I'm not going to tell you to go work at so-and-so company, but I'm going to say your gifting can manifest itself in this place. I don't know what you're gifted in. You know, you can see God. You know, if you don't know how to do it, get a hold of this tape series. It'll help you. The word brings change in your life. That's why we've got so much teaching in this ministry is so that you can have things revealed and revelation can break forth and you can be changed. You can be changed by this one message tonight on our webinar. It can change your life forever. On the chat, you can ask the pastors, those in leadership, the questions. I know we haven't been able to answer any right now, but it's critical for you to go and, and open your heart. You, they'll, you might, they'll, answer those, they'll answer the questions for you. Guide you into the Bible school training, and that's all free. Can you, you imagine? Know. The Bible school is totally free. I don't know where you could go on, go on to any Bible school and be able to go through free. Yeah, and it's amazing, no. but we've offered the Bible school free on Jesus' experience. And the purpose is to put into your hands all the training materials to empower That's you the to do the, the work school. of the ministry. The purpose of it is not to accumulate money. The purpose of it is to empower you to do the work of the ministry. Yeah, the Bible school's paid for. Yep. You know, you might see him. He looks a lot younger. I look a lot fatter. You know, I mean, we look a lot different back when it was taped, but the word is still the same, and it still God's has the power to change fails. you. Go on, go on. Take a course. Take a course like your liberty in Christ. Take a course like spirit, soul, and body. You're in a spiritual battle. Take a course like victory and spiritual warfare. You know, you need to have, know how to find the field that God planted for you. Take God's abundance, you know. Um, there's all kinds of courses. Yeah. Your life it's already important. has all the inheritance segments set in it. Recognize you are the called of God. We're going to pray right now for God to open heaven and give you supernatural revelation. Father, our confidence is in you, touching our family of God, touching our partners that we love so much, touching our viewers, God, that maybe they're here for the very first time and they've never known there was a destiny and a purpose for their life. Oh, Jesus. God, we just ask you yes, to open the eyes of their understanding. Give to each one the spirit of wisdom 
and revelation in the knowledge of you. God, our confidence is in you touching, in you revealing, in you speaking, in you fulfilling. And Father, we take dominion over all discouragement. Yes, we God. command every voice of fear, intimidation, the injury, Confusion. and we command the abuses that have occurred out of others' misuses. And we declare you're not defining, you're not going to forecast, you're not their destiny. We cancel the power of all that has been in the confusion, all that has been in the abuses, all that has been in the distortions of another person's misuse. We speak it loose its hold yes, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And God, we ever give you praise Thank you, in Lord. Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Make sure you get the power of God's prophetic purpose. Sow your seed online. It's six CDs. Get the study guide. Web offer 130. They don't even, they just, maybe they just want to sow a seed. Maybe there's one of those people that just are called to support the kingdom of God. Oh, you thank can, God. Believe me. Yes. Jesus' experience can definitely use what you, what you sow. Sow a seed on push pay. Go online and sow a seed to the ministry. It makes a big difference. Yes. It helps us accomplish the things that we're doing. We're training nationals around the world, well, and we'll right share there. more about that in the future because tonight we're about out of time. Yep. But we want to tell you that we love you. We do love you. We're so excited you spent the time with us tonight. Thank you. We appreciate the great grace of God in your life. And know that it is not just God who spoke to you. It is God who's with you, fulfilling everything he says. God we bless love you. you. Love Mwah. you. Love you.